My wife Lisa and I have tried to set a good example for our kids about the importance of family and hard work. And our eldest daughter, Daphne, is making us proud on both accounts. She's a great mom to our 18-month-old granddaughter, Philo. There she is, little Philo. And she's also one of the co-hosts of The Chew on ABC. I welcome my daughter, Daphne. Thank you. So, you can see from just a, a cursory examination that Daphne's ready. She's pregnant, going to give birth in about a month to our second grandchild, little boy. Yes. I can't ask the name, I guess. You can ask, I just can't tell you. She won't tell me the name, all right. We're beyond excited. So I would love to hear you describe to everybody else how this is different from the first pregnancy. Well, I mean, I, I, we have a little girl at home, Philo, obviously, and uh, this one's a boy. And I feel like, I don't know if the women in here who've had boys and girls, I feel like I've carried so differently with this one. Um, you know, with Philo, I was really wide right off the <laughs> outset. I'm, and everything was very compact. Your muscles are still tight. Everything's held in there. Whereas with him, it's just been popped out right from the outset. And it's interesting. I'll tell you this. It was kind of devastating. I fit much better in my clothing, but I'm about five pounds heavier now than I was at this time with Philo. Yeah. <laughs> so it's always the boy's fault. It's always it's his good fault. Training. Yeah. Well, it's, but I also know why that's the case. And it's because I've been craving Mexican food all day long. So chips and salsa for breakfast, chips and salsa for lunch. Well, people do that even without being pregnant. <laughs> what did you crave, Lisa, when you were pregnant? Oh, gosh. I was worried you would ask me this question. Um, brownie batter? Brownie batter. Uncooked with no brownie eggs batter. With no no eggs, eggs, no eggs. Just, you know, the box of brownie batter, put some water. I mean, <laughs> so very bad. You know, all grandparents brag about their grandkids as part of the, the opportunity we have. But, uh, and, you know, Bill is a little special because not only is she all the other things all grandkids are, but she loves eating food, especially exotic food. She's one of the best young eaters. Let's go over here. I've got a, a bunch of things that I've seen her eat. And some of these things are not items that I would have expected normally. For example, we've got olives here. She will munch through these darn olives. She'd finish this much off in she one sitting. All of those. And you better pit them quickly, she'll swallow the pits. And they come out in her poop, it's not pretty. That, it has never happened. That, that's because I'm so diligent about. getting out the pits. <laughs> What else do you have here that she eats? <laughs> well, you know, here's the thing. I, I try to feed her a variety of things, and I let her try a bunch of different things. And these are some of the ones that she actually really has gravitated towards. She loves grilled salmon. It's one of those things I never anticipated her liking. She loves grilled salmon. It's from salmon. her grandfather. Probably. Uh, brown rice and lentils, again, something that you wouldn't expect a kid to really love. But it's one of the things I exposed her to early, and so she, and she seems to have liked it. Hummus. Chicken and then some uh, some broccoli, but what you'll see here is it's like it's a very flavorful food. And I think at first when I was you know first learning how to feed her, I was afraid of salt and I was afraid of lots of flavor and spice and any of those things. And I think kids' palates are a lot like adults' palates, at least from what I've seen. You know, she wants things that have a lot of flavor in it. She does not want bland food. So you've got a little video that I want to start off with, but I have an ulterior motive. I want to talk about how kids acquire tastes. We're living it in real time, but there's actually pretty much a science around this. So can I show a little video you sent me? Of the broccoli? Yes. Philo loves broccoli. Yeah, yeah of This course. is how we get Philo to eat broccoli. Take a look. <laughs> Who's going to eat delicious broccoli for her lunchtime, for her lunchtime? Who's going to eat delicious broccoli? It's a green monster. It's a green monster. So <laughs> after that song, which Philo loves, she actually stopped eating broccoli. I understand. He scared her away. But I want to talk a little bit about why kids acquire the tastes of their mom. And most folks don't know this. You probably don't either. I made a little animation oh, for yeah. you. This is very high tech, very sciencey. So let's say you're the average woman and you start having cravings when you're pregnant. She looks and way too good. Yeah, she looks good. <laughs> so you, soda and chips. Now here's the thing. The baby is immersed in the amniotic fluid and actually oh. drinks several ounces of that fluid every day. So when the baby's exposed to chips but not broccoli, doesn't like the broccoli when they're born. But let's turn it around, let's go back in time. Now you're pregnant, maybe for the second child, and now you're eating the greens and the green drink and all the healthy, delicious foods that are good for you and the baby. The baby gets those things in their mouth from that amniotic fluid that they're drinking all day long. So when you expose them to these same healthy foods after they're born, guess what? They eat them. Now this is actually pretty cool information and absolutely validated over and over again. So that's one of the big challenges. Yeah. So come have a seat. Here's one of the big questions. If it's too late because you already had the baby and they're 25 years old, they're not eating good <laughs> food, or... And all they'll eat is chips and salsa. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> or, 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 brownie batter, have you been craving that? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Or, or if whatever reason the child doesn't cooperate, how do you convince a child to eat the right foods? 
Well, you know, I, I really look at it like, you know, it's every parent's nightmare. You make, you go through the process of making a delicious meal for your family and your kids won't eat it. And it's just, you know, you can fight them and you can try to bribe them and cajole them into eating what you want them to eat. And my grandma, my mother's mother, grandma, who won't come on the show, we know. Please, if she sees this, she will not, I tried to, I called to try to get her, I tried to con her, and I just said, come here and make up ready just in case. And she was scared away, won't come. <laughs> well, she, one of the things that she said to me with Philo, because it's, you are, you get, you do get nervous. You, I mean, you're, it's your responsibility to make sure that they're getting the best nutrition, that they're eating the things that are going to make them grow and thrive. Um, and so there, there would be nights where she would just decide she wouldn't eat broccoli anymore. She wouldn't eat the things that she used to love. And I would get nervous and scared and try, and that she wasn't going to get enough food and she wasn't going to have enough of the nutrients she needed. And so you, I would fight with her on it. And Grammy would say, you know, don't make it an emotional battle. The last thing you want is your kids to see withholding food or withholding eating as a way to control you, as a way to get your attention, as a way to have that emotional strife, because food should be about pleasure and joy and abundance and not about a, a conflict of wills, basically. So, and she said, look, she'll eat when she's hungry, so don't worry about it. And, and, and my pediatrician actually said, over the course of a week is what you really want to pay attention to. You know, some days they're just not that hungry. We go through, as adults, you go through this. Some days you're just not that um, into certain foods. And then the next day you might be fully ready for it. That said, I do have a couple recipes that I've developed that I try to, you know, it's, it's not sneaking food in. It's just yes, adding it is. She's sneaking food in. It's adding it's additional covert. ingredients um, <laughs> right. that I think make them a little more nutritious and that I also just give me a little peace of mind as a parent. So, um, one of the first things that I developed was this little smoothie that's just avocado, banana, some yogurt, and then um, I'll throw in a big handful of spinach. And kids don't know, at, at Philo's age, she's only 18 months, that green is supposed to be gross. She's actually kind of into it, and it's a little sweet from the banana and creamy from the avocado. Yeah. And so having her eat that right off the bat in the morning gives me insurance policy over the rest of the day if all she'll eat for me at dinner time is pasta with red sauce. Um, I make meatballs, and I'll put the broccoli, actually, because she did love broccoli, and now she'll eat it with the meatballs. I'll put broccoli and cheddar cheese right in the meatball so that she's getting everything all at once. And, you know, you, you, you experiment with your kids. But I think the single most important thing I did, and, and I learned it from you guys, was we grew up eating at the dinner table together as a family. And I saw what you guys ate. And I saw how much joy you took in your food and how much pleasure we got out of cooking together. And I, I was looking at me, too. I cooked the food, too. No, no, no. How much pleasure <laughs> we got out of cooking together. <laughs> how much pleasure you got out of eating the food we cooked together. Um, and... And I think kids want to emulate their parents. They will, and they love their pa parents, and they respect you so much. Seeing you eat well and seeing you eat foods that are good for you and enjoy that process is the most important thing. All right, so the big question I'm wondering, because I like conflicts, are how Philo's going to deal with her little baby brother. Let's go back a stick. Why do you like conflict so much? Because you can really get deeper into someone's soul. If you just puncture through the external little crusty shell we all keep around ourselves. So I watched Philo play with her cousins and I'm wondering how well she's gonna to take to having someone else in her life that she didn't invite, like her brother. <laughs> Well, I will say this. She, again, she's young, so I don't know if she fully comprehends what's about to happen in her life. Sometimes she'll come and she'll kiss my belly. Sometimes she'll come and she'll headbutt my stomach. So, you know, there's, a, there's a, definitely a conflict going on internally. I think she... Um, I think she will have some difficulty, as I did when my second sister, who I love dearly now, came along, <laughs> that, that you're replaced and your perfect existence is the only child has been, you know, uprooted. Um, but she loves being with people. She loves hanging out with our family and, and just being around people and being part of the mix. And I have no doubt that at the end of the day, she'll have be best friends with this. They will eventually. They always are. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss out on new videos to live the good life.